Is it time to think outside of the cabinet? Hello and thank you for tuning in to another When It Comes Down To It. When we're deciding exactly how to dry a toe kick or a concealed area or the interstitial space as it is called in construction beneath cabinets and behind cabinets, we need to make some decisions to determine first, is it possible? And second, is it a good idea? The concept is to utilize water categories first to determine is the material restorable? And of course, remember, we're talking primarily category one water here. Customer expectations. Did he love the cabinets or hate them? It's going to be a big decision there. And of course, the cabinet's physical construction and how it is placed in its environment and the construction of the wall and flooring system adjacent to the cabinets because we're drying the system, not just the cabinet. What are the possible options when we look at the three things of water categories, customer expectations, and the construction, we need to figure out possible drying options, discuss that with the customer, get their preference, and then of course, sometimes, oddly enough, you may even dry cabinets that you later dispose of. Now, I did catch you a little bit on that second one. I hope that means that literally we will sometimes dry cabinets that are going to be removed later on and replaced, especially in a commercial environment. Because if you remove the cabinets, let's just say you're in a chemical engineering laboratory at a university. If you remove all of the cabinets, they can no longer hold classes in that chemical engineering lab until the new cabinets come in. It might be much better to dry the older cabinets in place, allow them to utilize that laboratory, and then come in and replace the cabinets when they're not needing the facility. So always remember, you may actually still dry and then replace later on. So basically, drying underneath and behind cabinets comes into two main decision-making areas. First, making the decision, second deciding and employing the process. So on the decision making side of things, as we said earlier, water categories by the IICRC S500 indicates whether or not the water is contamination level. If the water is extensively contaminated, remember folks, we can always evaporate the water, but we can't always evaporate or control those contaminants. So if it's gonna be remaining contaminated, it should be slated for disposal. As long as we got good water, that means we can dry, it's gonna be safe afterwards for everybody to utilize that area, we're okay. Again, the customer's expectations, they love these cabinets, or it's a small section of cabinetry that's wet out of a huge area of cabinets that would be extremely expensive to replace because of matching issues would be difficult. These are also possibilities in decision making because we need to find out exactly what that customer's expectations is and can they be met. Now, can they be met section means next. We need to go in and inspect and assess the construction and the materials that make up both the cabinets, the floor, the subfloor, and the wall adjacent to those cabinets and ensure that we can dry all of them and we can monitor them while we're drying them to ensure that they are all dried as a system. Once we've decided that we're gonna dry the cabinets and leave them in the facility, or possibly slate them for removal later, we wanna make sure what our process is gonna be. First is our access point. Are we gonna access it from the front, which is normal, removing the toe kick or the undercover, and then blow air directly into the bottom cavity underneath the cabinets? That's a pretty easy access most of the time. There's also using the back side of the cabinet, which sounds strange, but that means we're going through the wall behind the cabinet. So we simply remove drywall, and then we actually have open access to dry underneath the cabinet and the flooring system. Now, of course, this does require us to go back and redo either plaster or drywall work on that wall to repair it, but it also means that we do not work in the front of the cabinet in the area where they're being utilized. So they couldn't be utilized while we're drying in this particular case. Also, we may go through the bottom of the cabinet. If we can't easily remove the toe kick, Many times we'll actually just cut the bottom of the cabinet out, work on the area, and then replace the bottom of the cabinet. Customer has no issue with that aspect of it. One of the simplest ways to actually handle the situation.
And of course, last but not least, we may actually go up through the flooring from below. So if we have a ceiling tiles that we can easily move, we can move them out of our way, go up through the subfloor and the floor and dry the bottom of the cabinets and monitor the situation that way. Once you've got your access decided and how you're going to do it and what tools you're going to need as far as specialized blowers or equipment to make it happen, we're going to also have to figure out the monitoring. Now monitoring here is going to be monitoring at a distance. So a lot of times we're looking at longer pins. The best thing to do if the pins aren't long enough is to substitute welding rods for that aspect of it. And you can actually test the welding rods. Remember, important to try and keep the distance kind of close to the distance span that you normally have with your pins on your meter. And of course, you can also utilize longer screws. To, and we can also install remote tracking systems at this point in time might be helpful to us. Whatever it is, make absolutely sure that your process will get you dry air to all of the wet surface areas and that your monitoring system will make sure that no material has been left behind wet. Otherwise than that, this is a great potential area for microbial growth because it's what? Dark, it's in an enclosed space, and it is basically typically a dirty or a dusty environment, so it has plenty of mold food down in there. So make absolutely sure you have a process and a decision made that will get you a successful end result. When it comes down to it, make sure you have the customer's approval and an obtainable goal for that project of drying underneath the cabinets and a process that will deliver a satisfactory end result. If you don't have all three, remember removal is always the option if drying cannot be done guaranteed. As always, thank you CNR for a support of the series and thank you for learning with rtilearning.com. So basically cabinet drying comes into or underneath cabinet drying comes into two Once we've decided that we do want to dry the cabinets and either remove them later or dry the cabinets and they will Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let me do it this way. Blow air in through the back side of that cabinetry, dry it all out, and then do pla uh, 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 pla u